children we have already discussed about autotrophic mode of nutrition today let us start off with heterotrophic mode of nutrition what do you mean by heterotrophic mode of nutrition it is a mode of nutrition where organisms depend on other organisms for their nutritional needs so these organisms which follow this mode of nutrition are known as heterotrophs we have another definition for this heterotrophic mode of nutrition that is breaking down complex organic substances into simple inorganic substances heterotrophic mode of nutrition is categorized into three that is parasitic mode of nutrition saprophytic mode of nutrition and holozoic mode of nutrition now what is this parasitic mode of nutrition those organisms which follow this mode of nutrition are known as parasites now parasites depend on other living organisms or they live on the body of other living organisms known as the host there are two types of parasites that is endoparasites and ectoparasites endoparasites are organisms which live inside the body of the organism while ectoparasites live outside the body of the organisms example for ectoparasites that is leeches lice etc and example for endoparasites are tape worms liver fluke round worms etc plant parasite example is cascuta which we commonly call amar pale now saprophytic mode of nutrition those organism which follow this mode of nutrition are known as saprophytes example for saprophytes are mushroom fungi mold etc of course uh, mushrooms and molds come under fungi now these organisms they break down complex organic substances outside the body of the organism and then absorb it they live on dead and decaying matter once again saprophytes are organisms which act upon complex organic substances they break down these complex organic substances outside and then it is incorporated absorbed into the once it is made simple it is incorporated into the body holozoic mode of nutrition the food is taken in as a whole and this complex food is then broken down to simple inorganic substances inside the body so we have discussed three modes of nutrition under heterotrophic mode of nutrition that is holozoic mode of nutrition parasitic mode of nutrition and saprophytic mode of nutrition course herbivores are those organisms which depend on plants while carnivores are those organisms which depend on other organisms or those which eat plants or herbivores now the alimentary canal of carnivores are always smaller than that of the herbivores because in case of herbivores they need to digest cellulose and digestion of cellulose is much more difficult than digestion of meat now we had a general discussion on heterotrophic mode of nutrition let us see what mode of nutrition the amoeba follows amoeba is a unicellular organism which does not have a definite shape when amoeba comes in contact with the prey it puts 
forward finger like projections called pseudopodia and engulfs the prey once the prey is engulfed it is once the prey is engulfed it is incorporated into the body of the amoeba and it forms a food vacuole this food vacuole is then digested absorbed and assimilated into the body of the amoeba and the waste is ejected out there is another unicellular organism known as paramecium in case of paramecium it has a definite shape it is a slipper shaped organism the prey when it comes in contact with paramecium it is brought towards a specific spot by small hair like structures called cilia the cilia help to bring the prey towards a specific spot called gullet and the prey is then incorporated into the body of the paramecium through the gullet thus it forms a food vacuole now this food vacuole is then digested absorbed and assimilated and the waste is then ejected out through a specific spot now let us focus on the difference between amoeba and paramecium amoeba first of all does not have a definite shape but paramecium has a definite shape in case of amoeba it catches the prey with the help of finger like projections called pseudopodia while in the case of paramecium cilia helps to bring the prey towards the specific spot second difference is that in case of amoeba the food can be incorporated into or the prey can be incorporated into the body by any part of the body or through any part of the body while in case of paramecium it is incorporated through a specific spot called gullet say in the case of ejecting out the waste in case of amoeba it can be ejected out through any part of the body but in case of paramecium it is ejected out only through a specific spot now we have discussed in detail about nutrition in amoeba and paramecium next the most interesting that is nutrition in human beings once again let us bring back to our memory what is the definition of the word nutrition nutrition means taking in food from outside to inside and breaking down of this complex food into simple inorganic substances incorporating it into the body and thus energy is released and this energy is utilized for various purposes now this whole process of nutrition can be divided or subdivided into five processes the first one is ingestion that is taking in a food followed by digestion digestion followed by absorption assimilation and finally ejection i repeat the five sub processes of nutrition are ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection now let us discuss what is the alimentary canal alimentary canal is a long tube that starts with the mouth and ends with the anus alimentary canal is otherwise known as the gut the various parts of the alimentary canal are mouth which is otherwise known as the buccal cavity esophagus also known as the food pipe stomach small intestine large intestine rectum anus and 
also associated with this are various glands, salivary glands, liver, pancreas, gastric glands, intestinal glands, etc. We shall study in detail each. First, the mouth. Food is ingested through the mouth or taken in through the mouth. Mouth is otherwise known as buccal cavity. Now, when we focus on the mouth, we need to discuss the role of teeth, tongue and salivary glands. First of all, teeth. In human beings, we have two sets of teeth. When you are kids, you have what is called the milk teeth, which falls off at the age of 10 to 11 and then you get your permanent set of teeth. We have a total of 32 teeth and these 32 teeth all are not similar. We have four different types of teeth that is the incisors, canine, molars, premolars and each has a different function. Incisors are for biting, canines for tearing, premolars and molars for grinding and chewing the food properly. Now tongue. It is a highly muscular and flexible organ. Tongue helps in speech. It also helps us to detect taste because gustatory receptors are present on the tongue. Not only that, tongue helps to mix the food properly and helps in swallowing it. Salivary glands. We have three pairs of salivary glands located in the mouth and they produce a liquid called saliva which contains an enzyme called salivary amylase. What is the function of salivary amylase? Salivary amylase helps in the breakdown of starch to sugar. Here we have an activity. Let us take two test tubes each containing 1 ml of 1% starch solution. We need to label them as A and B. In test tube A, we need to add saliva and in test tube B, we will not. After this, we add a few drops of iodine in test tube A and B as well and keep this experimental setup for 20 to 30 minutes. Then when we look at it, we see that there is no color change in test tube A while in test tube A, B, the color has changed to blue-black which indicates the presence of starch. So what has happened in test tube A? In test tube A, the presence of salivary amylase, due to the presence of salivary amylase, starch was broken down to sugar. So there is no color change. So what is the uh, function of uh, salivary amylase? Once again, breaking down of complex starch to simple sugar. So once again, I just want to rewind. That is, what are the topics we discussed today? What is heterotrophic mode of nutrition? Which are the three uh, types of or subdivisions of heterotrophic mode of nutrition? Uh, mode of nutrition in amoeba, paramecium, what are the differences? What is the general definition of nutrition? And the five processes involved in nutrition and also the various parts of the buccal cavity.